Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is Yasser Qadi on behalf of Muslim Matters. For further interesting Islamic podcasts, please log on to our website www.muslimmatters.org. Jazakumullahu khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الرحمن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. One very important lesson that we learn in the Quran is that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has not demanded perfection of us. That Allah سبحانه وتعالى in the Quran, if you look, He has not demanded that we be perfect. But what Allah has demanded is that we make an effort and that we try. And that we're sincere in our efforts. And that we do whatever we're capable of doing. Make the most of what we have. And then make dua to Allah. And then from there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept inshallah. And we see this in the Quran in many many different places. First of all, as I already said, you won't see where Allah is demanding us to be perfect. But what Allah is demanding and what He does value from His slaves is an effort. It's a struggle. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly mentions again and again in the Quran. One particular place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this and speaks about these people with reverence and speaks about them with a tone of forgiveness and mercy upon these people is when Allah is talking about the situation at the time of Tabuk towards the end of the life of the Prophet peace be upon him there was the campaign of Tabuk. It was a very long, arduous journey. And at that time they were going to, according to what they expected, they were going to be facing very, very tough odds. And it was extreme heat. And it was the time of the harvest. So all the difficult situations and circumstances had become combined. And then on top of everything, this was Obligatory. It was compulsory to answer this call. And the fetal arm. Everyone had to go. Everyone had to go. And when this call was made and when this demand was placed upon the believers, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about it in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah. لَيْسَ عَلَى الضُّعَفَاءِ وَلَا عَلَى الْمَرْضَى وَلَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ مَا يُنْفِقُونَ حَرَجٌ إِذَا نَصَحُوا لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِ that Allah first talks about the people who came وَجَاءَ الْمُعَذِّرُونَ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ لِيُؤْذَنَ لَهُمْ وَقَعَدَ الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَ That they came making excuses to you. The people who had hypocrisy in their hearts. People who did not wish to strive for the pleasure of Allah. They came making excuses. I have this problem, I have that situation, this situation. Can I stay? Can I please stay? And Allah talks about this earlier. That Allah says, إنما يستأذنك الذين لا يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر وارتاب قلوبهم فهم في ريبهم يترددون That the ones who come and seek permission, meaning they make excuses, the ones that are coming to be excused, they are the ones who do not truly believe in Allah in the last day of judgment. They are the ones with doubts in their heart. لا يستأذنك الذين يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر But the people who truly have iman in their hearts, they will not come to you making excuses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is the situation at that time. But Allah said that He is not angry. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not displeased with the people who truly were incapable of going. That there is no, that, that they do not have to fear any consequences of not going. If they truly, sincerely from their heart, they want to go, but they're incapable of doing so. Because of their circumstances. Because of their situation. And what's very interesting in this ayah, وَلَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ مَا يُنْفِقُونَ حَرَرَ مَا يُنْفِقُونَ That especially the people who cannot find anything to go and spend. They don't, they don't have the resources to go. And now Allah talks about these people. That these people, they come to you. And they say, take, take us with you. But the Prophet ﷺ, he tells them that I don't have anything. I don't have any resources. I don't have transportation. I don't have provisions to take you along with me on this journey and on this campaign. Then Allah says that, 
But these people, the sign of the sincerity in their hearts, tawallaw, that they turn away from there. Meaning they come, they say, take us. Tahmiruhum. That you, you give them some transportation. Give them some provisions. Give them the means to go. But you tell them, I don't have anything to offer to you. We're already short on supply. I'm sorry, but I can't take you with me. Allah says, tawallaw. They turn away from there. وَأَعْيُنُهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ حَزَنًا but their eyes are flowing with tears. Tears are coming from their eyes. Hazanan. They're depressed. They're sad. They're disappointed. Allah yajidu ma yunfiqoon. That they don't have anything to spend in the past of the world. That they, don't, they, they just don't have anything to take with them in the past of the world. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing here to us. What's required of us is an effort. To do whatever is within our means. Look at these Sahaba. They're being turned away. But they walk away crying. That I wasn't able to go in the path of Allah because I don't have anything. I don't have any money. This is a sincerity. So making the effort is what's required of us. But with sincerity. Being honest to ourselves. Being true in our hearts. Being sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what these Sahaba have. And that's why Shaytan, in Surah Saad, when Shaytan, when he swore, said, فَبِعِزَّتِكَ He swore by Allah's might and His power, لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ That I will mislead all of humanity. That I swear by you, O oh Allah, I will mislead all of these people, all of mankind. I will mislead them. I will misguide them. إِلَّا عِبَادَكَ مِنْهُمُ الْمُخْلَصِينَ he didn't say except for the ones who are perfect. He said except for the ones who are sincere. Sincerity is such a strength. Except for the ones who are sincere, I can't touch them. I won't be able to misguide them. That sincerity will keep them straight. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Tubu ilallahi tawbatan nasuha. Make tawbah but sincerely. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, com- has created you and commanded you and given you this deen, فَعْبُضُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ So that you may be sincerely for His worship, and for His ibadah, and for His service, and devotion, and dedication to Him. So this is why we have to realize this, that many, many times we get caught up in this trap. If we don't have the resources, whether that be time, or money, or energy, or physical ability, Whenever we don't have the time to accomplish the complete goal, we keep pushing it off. Inshallah when I have the money, inshallah when I have the time, inshallah when I feel better, then I'll do that. We keep pushing it off, pushing it off. Waiting for that perfect time to happen, that perfect storm to happen. When everything, all the chips will fall in their place, everything will be lined up perfectly, and then I'll be able to accomplish my goal. This is a flawed approach that the Prophet ﷺ in the Qur'an is teaching us that no, you do whatever is within your capacity at that time. Do what is in your means at that time. Do whatever you're capable of doing at that time. That if I am not capable of memorizing the whole Qur'an, I can memorize three lines. Nobody stop me from doing that. Let me sit down. If I don't have two hours, I have five minutes. If I can't come to the masjid all five times a day, I can come once a day for salah. If I can't recite a juz every day, I can at least recite two, three pages every day. If I can't donate $5,000 to the masjid or to the project, I can at least put $5 in the box. Whatever that might be. But do whatever we're capable of doing. And if we maximize our resources and our potential, wherever we're at in our lives, and then we make dua to Allah, to accept this and purify this and give us tawfiq and guidance to do even more and more, then that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts a person for the true service of his deen. So inshallah, during this month, this month is a great practice in this and a great lesson in this. That during this month, we should make a firm intention that I will change my life. I will begin changing my life, no matter what that might be. I will improve my life. I will cut certain wrong things out of my life. I will 
implement good habits and different important aspects of my deen within my life and I will start small if that's what I'm capable of doing but I'll start somewhere and I'll begin making an effort and then through that intention and through the sincerity in our hearts and then our prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He inshallah will accept it and He will either give us the tawfiq and the guidance to accomplish the end of our goal or if we leave this world and we still were not able to accomplish that goal, but we were sincerely working towards that goal, on the Day of Judgment, inshaAllah, Allah will raise us from amongst the ranks of those people. If a person starts memorizing the Qur'an with this sincere intention, I will become a complete hafiz. Let's say he dies, he passes away, he was not, wasn't able to finish. Inshallah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great, Allah will raise him in the ranks of the Hufad on the Day of Judgment. So for that reason, inshallah, begin doing whatever we can in aspects of time, money, efforts, begin doing whatever we're capable of doing, no matter what level we're at. May Allah give us the ability to practice everything that's been said.